Well, hello, man cavers. We are back. Here's my face. And yes, I've had a haircut. And yes, the council done it. <laughs> Anyhow, what are we doing today? We are going to have another look at this Albion gearbox. Because there's a little job we need to do to it. One I just couldn't leave. Roll the credits. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So, if you guys remember this Albion off of the Bonza, this is off the Bonza truck. She's looking really good. She's had a coat of satin black ready to go on, but it isn't. I have off camera done the gear linkage. I've put that in some evapo rust, wire wheeled it, evapo rusted it, and give it a coat of paint. Our linkage is all free with the new cotter pins and everything. Excellent stuff. Right. We did the clutch on this. Now, I am going to go totally against everything I normally do on my channel, where I say fix what's there let me explain well then some things i say fix what's there you know minimal cost but when i took this clutch off i was not happy at all with the condition of the pressure plates the friction discs yeah, they cleaned up fine them pressure plates were really, really horrendously bad, badly pitted. Even though they had a night in a vapo rust, I dressed them up with a flap disc in the four and a half inch grinder. I still don't think they're going to be efficient. And the last thing I want to do is get all this bolted back on the Bonzo with the engine covers on, go to start it and find that the clutch is not working because... Them pressure plates have too much crud. They may be too thick and they'll snip the clutch up. They may be too thin and they'll overheat. Either way, look at that. I've gone totally against everything I says. And I've bought three new clutch discs. Two dished. One flat. I looked the video back and there was two dished ones and one flat one come out of there. So, what we're going to do is whip this back off and replace these friction plates. To be honest with you, I didn't realise you could get them. And I'm not sure if these are the ones. They come off Villiers part. They were about seven quid each. And it says that fits a selection of Villiers gearboxes now they measured I think that was was it five and a half inches across they had it measured out at five and a half inches across or was it four and a half I don't know five and a half look we got five and a half inch across there and that is about five and a half inch across there so I'm assuming as long as these middle locators are the same they will fit an Albion even though it was not listed as fitting an Albion it was fitting a Villiers and several different clutches it said so we will see won't we I think what I need to do and also what I didn't do on the last video was see if this sprocket turns independent to this back one we need to check because if that's all seized up, the clutch is again going to be all one. So we're going to do all these checks in this little video. Let me find something to put under this gearbox to hold it up. Right, we have got this gearbox propped up. So she all spins. Let's now... Wrong way, Fent. Let's buzz these off. Oh, ah. So we'll just buzz these springs off and we'll have a look and see if these clutch plates will fit. 
Now they don't appear to have too much grease on them. They really don't. They appear to be surprisingly clean. But what I will do, I thought they would have had oil on them. I couldn't feel a lot of oil. So we'll just get a rag and wipe them. I mean, they don't feel oily at all. They don't feel any sort of oily residue on there. So I think this is my cleanest dirty rag. <laughs> Let's pull all this stuff off and let's get this clutch plate back out again. So we've got to pull all these pins out, haven't we? And then this front plate comes off. Now then, here's where we've got our friction discs. Oh, that little end just, just fell out. So I think now we've got to get this thing off and that will make the plates a lot easier to get out. Come on, once we get the loose bit, there we go, look, there we go, right, now we've got to take this friction disc, oh, I'm leaving these because these are actually, I think they'll go again fine, these are the ones we're replacing, whether this will work, I don't know. See, we've got a dished one in the front there, but just look at the state of these. I hope you can see just how pitted, I'll try and get in there, how pitted and cruddy. Yeah, there's, these are just horrific. And I couldn't bring myself to leave them in. I know, it's not man cave, is it? Look at this one. Look at the state of that. So much pitting. If I get it in the light, corrosion. Yeah, I thought, let's replace them. Let's just replace them. There's that one. So we've got two out. I think there's one in the back air as well. If we can get that one out. Come on. There is one in the back here, look. How do you fish this little sod out? With a hook tool. There we go. We have a hook tool coming everywhere. I need two hook tools, one either side. She's coming. No, I ain't. <laughs> These are a fiddly damn thing. I are on that spline, look. And I don't have a second hook tool to hand. There we go. Right. So our flat one, look at the state of that. See, I could not leave these in here not looking like that. So let's see, moment of truth. Will these Villiers ones fit? If these don't fit, I'm going to swear. <laughs> but, oh, we haven't checked, have we? We haven't checked that. It's looking good so far. Where does this independently turn? Ah! Right, I'm holding the sprocket at the back. Yep, I'm holding the sprocket at the back and the gear and this this sprocket is turning freely of the one at the back. So the back one. Let me show you. Ah, can you see? Can you see in the back here? If I hold this one, this one's turning. Either way, or vice versa. Look. So yes, the sprockets are moving very freely and very independent of each other. Right, let's go back to where we were a second ago. In the back here, it's quite good. Have I? Did I have that together right, or should there be a friction disc in there first? You know, 
No, it doesn't. It was just this one. Yeah, I remember from the first time. Does this fit? Because I don't know if these are the right ones. Oh, they are. Look. Yes. Right. That clutch disc fits. These are all good and cleaned. So we can put them in. Then we want a dished one. Look at that. Another friction disc. There we go. This one. Oh. And then this one goes on the outside here. There we go. There is our clutch. All reassembled. Oh, I was wondering what that does. That holds them inner discs in. So, yeah, that's still... Yeah, I think that's going to work, isn't it? Yeah, that is going to work. And Let's get a gear. All right. Oh, yeah, it's now starting to turn that. Perfect. Yeah, we're all right. Right, we can now be getting, and if you're wondering why didn't you replace this one, well, I couldn't find this one. I couldn't find that new, what I might do, that is really bad still, isn't it? I might give that a bit more dressing, because that is horrifically bad. But I genuinely couldn't find this front cover anywhere. Let me give that a clean or something. All right, here we go. I have dressed this up a bit with a grinder. That is as good as I can get that, I'm afraid. So, hopefully now, are these pins meant to be oiled up, you know, so everything moves freely? Do you know, I bet they are. You don't want to get too much, too much oil on them where they're going to play about on the... um. Where they're going to mess around on the clutch plates, but I think they might want to be slightly lubricated so that clutch will go freely on them. So I'll put a drop of oil around them. There you go. That's a little drop of oil around them. Get our clutch springs back on. And then we can be getting these damn bolts back in. Which last time were fiddly damn things. Because you really got to push again them springs to get them started. Come on. Let me get round here. Sorry, guys, I need to do this with my right hand. Some things a man just need to do with his right hand. <laughs> oh, filth thing. Oh, that got started a bit easier. So, obviously, that clutch is a little bit thinner now because they went in there quite easy. So, let's now rattle these back up with our little windy. There we go. Do you know, there's a little bit of gap in them springs now, so I think that will compress. Let me just tighten these down. Oh, that has done them. Yeah, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of compression in these springs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely engaging on that back gear. So I reckon once our clutch is pushed in, and for those of you that are saying, do you have a clutch lever? 
because there's meant to be a clutch lever. Well, I do and I don't. <sighs> My buddy, Matt, sent me a clutch lever off an Albion gearbox to use. Spring cover has come off. There we go. Yeah, he sent me one to use. But unfortunately, it's a bit too small that it won't go over this shoulder here. Because it isn't quite wide enough. And it's not long enough. It only comes throughout to about here. So your clutch cable would be pulling down at an angle. So I think um, I'm going to have to make something to go on there. Because I know I'm not going to have to push it in, man. That's going to take a lot of force. Because we've got to push against these three springs. To actually push this end plate out to take the tension off them. But there you go. We have fitted a new clutch to that Albion gearbox. So, for those of you that are saying Norfolk barge man, he's not barging now, he's actually putting a new clutch in. And in case you was wondering, them clutch discs were £7.25 each, with plus the VAT. And the delivery, they come, uh, I think that was 31 quid for them three, delivered to the door, and they were there in two days. So they come from Villiers Park, so not a sponsored video here at all. Just thought I'd give you a little plug for them, because, you know, their service was good, and um, yeah, they seem to fit. So if you see them, you do know that they do fit this Albion gearbox off of a Bonza. There we go. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe. And yes, we will do more videos. The next video, I think, what am I doing tomorrow? Um, I'm fitting electronic ignition on that Triumph Spitfire tomorrow. Distributor, rotor arm, um, coil, leads, plug. The whole lot, we're doing an electronic ignition conversion. So... You're into your car videos tomorrow. We'll be doing that on a Spitfire. But for now, it's bye bye from me and it's bye bye from this Albion gearbox. Ah, bye bye for now, guys.